So today, uh, we're really excited. So very first thing this morning, and um, we're delighted to have Te Papa's new chief executive, Rick Ellis, here to say a few words and introduce himself to the NDF community. As you may have seen, when Rick's appointment was announced a couple of weeks ago, Rick has worked as a senior executive in roles in the public sector as the chief executive officer of ANSET New Zealand, the managing director of EDS New Zealand, and most recently, the group executive at Telstra Media based in Sydney. Rick also spent 10 years as the chief executive of TVNZ, where he led the development of their digital channels. So we're very pleased to welcome Rick to the NDF, and I hope you'll join me in welcoming him to the stage. Tana Koto, delighted to be hosting you all here at uh, Te Papa. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Thomas, and it makes me feel so old <laughs> with all of those jobs that I've had. Um, <clears throat> but I'm just delighted to have this opportunity to just uh, share some thoughts with you, I guess. Um, our challenge, um, I'm sure, resonates with, with all of you. It's, it's how do we help create uh, a brilliant, connected future for all New Zealanders. Um, and those, of course, that have an interest in us. Uh, whilst this wonderful physical place will always be our home, uh, we literally have a, a, tre a, a treasure trove of stories to tell, taonga, treasures to share, uh, that help to define who we are as a people, uh, increasingly a multicultural society, <coughs> and who we are as a country. And digital can clearly help to liberate those stories and treasures. Um, you'll no doubt know that uh, smartphone and tablet penetration in the developed world is basically north of 90% now. In fact, in my relatively short time at Telstra, uh, the growth rate from 2011, 2012, 2013, now into 2014, has just been phenomenal, uh, where feature phones have literally disappeared off the face of the earth. In fact, the, the last sort of um, vestige of, of feature phone usage is mainly gamers, uh, who have a community of games on their feature phones, and they're reluctant to give that up uh, to the smartphone environment. So, clearly, human behavioural response uh, to this changing digital technology, particularly the smartphone and tablet technology, um, is fundamentally changing almost every sector of society and business, whether uh, you look at the public sector, the private sector, the not-for-profit sector. And I just uh, moved to Wellington from Paddington, uh, Oxford Street, uh, Sydney, and uh, the, the evidence of this change is palpable. Uh, Oxford Street is be, used to be a vibrant shopping area, lots of boutique stores and uh, mainstream brands. And today, when you walk down Oxford Street, every third or fourth shop is empty with a four lease sign on it. And it's interesting, actually, in today's Dom Post, where I see the, the direct parallels here. Pumpkin Patch may close stores. And then the, one of their executives is quoted, a greater focus would be put on the company's omni-channel business model, which includes a digital strategy centered around mobile and online sales. And then she goes on to say, if you haven't adapted to online change, then you're going to get left behind. And above those empty stores, in Paddington is a vibrant digital uh, acceleration and incubation community housed um, in a Telstra facility, Telstra Global uh, Exchange facility. And uh, every six months, there's 10 or 11 uh, digital uh, early stage businesses that go into that intense acceleration environment and get propelled uh, into global markets because fundamentally 
uh, these digital businesses, if they can't succeed globally, they're not going to succeed at all. And that's particularly into China and uh, the United States. <clears throat> and we've now uh, partnered, connected uh, this community. It's called Muru D, Muru being Galangal Aboriginal people uh, language for pathway to D being digital. And we've now partnered uh, the Muru D community with the Ice House and Lightning Lab communities here in Wellington and in Auckland. And uh, I attended four weeks ago uh, A, the launch of Lightning Lab Auckland, uh, which is a concentrated acceleration of uh, digital businesses here in New Zealand. Um, but in addition to that, attended uh, the Ice Angels annual function, which was the most well attended, in fact, the most extraordinary uh, function uh, held really in the digital lifetime to date of New Zealand. 14 businesses from Dunedin, Tauranga, Wellington, Auckland, Northland uh, presented their business case to about 180 angel investors, not all grey hairs like me. And the most amazing thing is they were, they were asking for between one and three million dollars of investment uh, to take them to that next you know, phase of growth where they can hopefully grow to be a 50 or 100 million dollar company or more. And the amazing thing is, uh, just with the Ice Angels uh, uh, show fund too, which closed, I think, yesterday, um, <clears throat> angel investors will write now checks for $20,000, which is the minimum investment to be part of this $1 million fund. And what really struck me uh, attending that uh, function, and indeed investing, along with many others, uh, was that people are taking their money out of term deposits and, and property now and putting it into these businesses. And I firmly believe that um, New Zealand has an opportunity to be uh, a world leader in digital entrepreneurship and that uh, there's a whole new wave of digital economic opportunity that will embellish and enhance our core assets around dairy and food production and tourism and create uh, a framework or a platform, if you like, for uh, significant um, future security around our economic prosperity. Um, <clears throat> so whether in the not-for-profit, in the public sector or in the private sector, um, we all have to connect with our consumers. And I just have a couple of thoughts perhaps I could leave with you in terms of um, uh, uh, what I believe uh, are some of the, the basics of succeeding in connecting with consumers, with citizens, um, and with all stakeholders in a digital environment. And number one uh, is to deeply understand uh, what consumers' expectations of are you, let's say citizens, expectations of are you, uh, your service, your product, whatever, um, <clears throat> how do they want to engage with you, what do they want from you, you have to understand that to be successful in a digital environment. And that's why you're seeing an explosion of uh, organisations, public and private, um, uh, employing uh, basically design thinking, which is a, a, a fundamentally different way of thinking about the future and about strategy, which is anchored in a deep understanding of consumer behaviour and particularly consumer expectations around uh, technology and how you engage with technology. And I have to say, uh, design thinking is, is, is well embedded in the United States. It's in its incubational stages here in New Zealand. I think we're actually ahead of the Australians in this respect. There's only one design thinking company of any standing really in Australia called Second Road. And I'm just delighted and uh, you know, high fives to the AUT uh, in Auckland and uh, Manukau campus for bringing design thinking uh, into their curriculum. So that's, that's the first, I guess. The second is um, uh, really where you can is to um, adopt or deploy um, existing platforms 
uh, or apps as opposed to you know inventing everything from scratch in your own um, organization because that's expensive it's uh, got a high probability of failure and of course failing fast of course is a big part of the the digital world learning from that and then you know getting on with the next iteration um, and then I guess my final um, message in this space is um, <clears throat> irrespective of what approach you do take uh, just get on with it because you know the citizens and consumers are going to leave you behind uh, unless you engage with them in an effective way. So with that, um, I uh, trust that you'll have an enjoyable day. I see it's a, it's a rich uh, agenda, and uh, kia ora.